Awesome. So today's seminar is about how to grow business using Google. And this is our part two. Last time we kind of went through like a high level uh, overview of what is going on today. Um, it's going to be a little more technical, a little more uh, detailed. Um, uh, I still try to keep it very simple, but I ho I'm hoping this is going to be uh, helping you all um, what you should expect at the end of this this um, um, this seminar is you have a better understanding about how uh, you can possibly get free leads or cost effective leads from Google. It could be both. And I'm going to explain what that means. But you're going to be able to understand a little more uh, uh, specific what needs to be done in order to start getting free leads and free clients from Google and grow your business. So um, first of all, and even before we jump into the conversation about how to do this, I want to touch on why it matters. So it's important. And, and you know, this slide is probably going to be uh, um, easily communicating that to you about why it is important. So to the right, you can see the number of times people have been using Google every year to search for pretty much everything. It's the number of search queries over the years. So today, the estimated daily number of Google queries is 5.2 billion times. That's a, that's a daily number of queries. That's a very large number. That's almost 60% that's almost of world's population. So, uh, so we can see on average, uh, every human being is searching 15 times a month. That's the average. And, and then every American is doing three to four queries a day. And what does that mean to you? That means Google is definitely part of the day-to-day -day life of most Americans. And if it is part of the day-to-day -day life of most Americans, that just tells you that when people are wondering about anything or they need anything, they're likely to use Google if they don't know the answer. Of course, if they have the answer, they would just go with, to what they know. But a lot of people are using Google to um, reach out to new people, new businesses, new opportunities. So, um, uh, and, and then what does that tell, to, tell you? Uh, of course, it tells you that there's a great opportunity here because of the trend that it's more and more people are using Google. If you don't take that uh, into your, uh, I guess, business plans, that just simply means you're probably going to be off that uh, opportunity. You're not, not going to get those leads. You're going to start losing business. That's a possibility that applies to many businesses. It, it, it may be not directly applicable to you, but it's likely to be directly app applicable to, be, to you if you are like most of the other businesses. Then um, the other issue is, of course, you're losing opportunities. So it's not just that you're not getting you're not you're going to be losing business but you could be getting more business so even if you already have a steady business but even in that case if you want to grow you can just uh, see from these uh, this this information that there is an opportunity even for you who, who, who are already successful to get more business from google um and then and then if you're not following these uh, uh i guess trends and um information and opportunities what happens is that you're almost certainly going to be uh, in the blind side of any any new trends any new thing that is happening so you might not totally know until it's too late about what your competition is doing and what opportunities you might have but you might be missing and then when you realize it might be just already very hard to catch up um, and, 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 and I can tell you that your competition, your successful competition is doing it. So this is something that if you, if you want to be successful, you have to take that into your plan because, because your competition and many people in, in, the, in this space are actually doing it. Um, so, uh, and these are a couple of other interesting um, stats. So 58 million Americans work in the small businesses and 30 of percent of them do not have a website. So that tells you if you don't have a website, you, if you don't have a great system in place to get leads from Google, 
that doesn't mean you're just totally behind. No, there are a lot of other people who have the same challenge, but at the same time, this just tells you that there's a great opportunity for you because you can immediately be ahead of many others who still don't have that, uh, I guess, system set up. So um, um, another question that often comes up uh, is whether or not it's free. So people want to know if it is free to get Google, uh, to, to get leads from Google, or is it is it not free? And and actually, uh, most people I've talked to who are not very much into this kind of stuff think that it is not free. So that's also an impression I've seen from many people. So so to address the question of whether or not it's free, because I know that at the end of the day, everybody wants to know what's the how much is it going to cost? Is it going to be costing us? What is the what is the I guess uh, necessary funds available if you're just going to go to this? Is it, does it even um, make sense for me to to pay attention to the rest of this presentation? If it's just an expensive deal, it doesn't work for me, right? So uh, to answer that question, so if you look at what you can you see on here, I want to explain what what happens, and then this there is a there is a free part, there is a not free part, and I'm going to explain what does it mean that it is free. So for me to go through this process, I'm going to first show you a, a live search on Google. And you see here, I'm showing actually a search. It's, it's plumber near me. And then you can see this is the top of the page. This basically this to the right is showing the, the continuation of what you see in the left side. This is like a screenshots of my, um, I guess, search results. And, um, and you can see that. Uh, it, it consists of a bunch of sections. There is, these are sponsored, as it says in here. There is a ad, ad, so these are ads. Then there is a Google map where it shows some local businesses. And then there are other links here that they don't, they don't have that ad, I guess, um, icon next to the um, title. And um, I'm showing three of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing on a live Google uh, screen. So I'm searching plumber near me. And, um, you know, I'm, loc I'm located from at Houston, Texas right now. And uh, of course, so Google knows that. So when I search for plumber near me, they will be looking for plumbers near Houston, Texas. If you're looking for the same term, but you're in Los Angeles or Chicago, that's going to be a different um, result because they know you're searching from a different location. You know, 281 is the extension, is one of the extensions for phone, phone, uh, phone number um, um, area codes for Houston, Texas. So these are some Houston businesses. It says sponsored. So clearly there is some relationship between Google and these guys. And obviously these are paid. So uh, if someone clicks on them and visits those those guys, there is some financial relationship between Google and them and those guys. Then on here, you will see some uh, ads. So it does say ad. So these are what are commonly known as CPC ads or search CPC ads. So the CPC means cost per click. So if someone clicks on them, uh, immediately Google charges these guys. So this is like one business uh, that uh, as is paying, you see, this is also another local area code for Houston. Um, um, and then, so this one, the same thing. This is another Google ad. These on the map, what you see, these are not paid. You don't, you don't see any mention of sponsored or paid. These are actually locations close by that in Google's database. And I may not be able to go into details, but in this presentation, we can talk about this later if you are. Uh, interested to have a follow-up conversation, but these are not paid ads. So because of my location, I'm like right now in uh, downtown Houston, and it is based on my location suggesting a few local businesses that match the keyword that they search, and these are not paid ads. So these are um, pretty much free if someone clicks on them or just follows the phone number, calls them. These guys are not paying Google uh, a dime. There's no transaction between them. And then <coughs> and then there is this um, below the map, there is um, other um, uh, other link. You can it's usually 10 links. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. 
it looks like there's 10 free and then at the bottom of the page we also have three more ads so those 10 are also what we call organic results which is free so being on top 10 organic results which means you will be on the first page of google uh, results when someone searches for that keyword would mean you are not going to pay any money to google but you're going to have a good chance of getting a lot of traffic related to the keywords uh, that are related to your website and business so so to to answer that question again it it depends there is there are paid ads and, and paid services that are totally um, paid, so they're not free. There are, on Google Maps, these are actually um, a lot easier at times to be listed on the top. If somebody is pretty close to your business and you have properly set your business in Google, you're not going to have to pay anything to Google if you'll be able to find you or we show it to, your, to, you, to their uh, customers or Google, I guess, search customers, and, and you'll be able to get those leads. And then if you're on this part of the results, and so this is the part that it is not paid, it is free. So there is no payment between these businesses and Google. But being on the first page of Google results may need some work. And that is the part that if you know how to do it yourself, then it's going to be free for you in terms of uh, paying any money but it does take time so it's not free free it's not like um, doesn't take any because if you take time as also money then it does take some time and uh, if you want to hire someone to do this for you then it's going to be some cost for you but this is more like an investment it's not a direct payment to google but it's developing uh, basically establishing yourself as a credible result related to that keyword the, and developing a relationship with Google, which takes more time, and it is something that can be technically involved, but but it is it is worth it because now you're going to get a lot of free traffic from Google, and that's going to be basically the focus of uh, my presentation today. So we're going to be talking about how you can be on the first page of Google results on keywords that are related to you and so that you can get free traffic from Google, um, um, knowing that it, it might need some work for you to do in order for that uh, to happen. But the great thing is that when this happens to you, it's usually fairly stable. It's, it's usually fairly stable. That means you're not going to easily lose that position quickly, at least. It does need you to stay active and, and uh, make it uh, an ongoing I guess work but it's usually pretty worth it so uh, we talked about whether or not it's free uh, but but what are if i was to just quickly touch on the the, the factors the the um the main the key aspects of what needs to be done or what's relevant to be on the first uh top 10 organic results on google um, I, I categorize them to four different variables. And you know what, the, the, the reason is, see, if you look at it on here, if it does show that, okay, it says Plumber near me, 768 million results. And in less than a second, Google was able to provide you that 768 million results. So, um, the, of course, Google is not going uh, to search for the results related to your keyword after uh, every inquiry. The, the way it works is that Google has already spent a lot of time, weeks, possibly months, uh, possibly years, uh, scanning all the different websites uh, uh, that they have access to. And in fact, they keep redoing that. They scan over and over every single website, every single web page, every, every single link that they have and then they also even kind of monitor how people are interacting with those pages and then they're going to have for instance for every keyword like plumber near houston texas they're going to have a large number of uh, results in this case 768 million that are relevant 
So Google has to, Google understands that being on the first page or second page or third page is definitely um, a lot, a lot more, um, I guess, um, visible, make those results a lot more visible to their, uh, to people who are searching than being on page uh, 2000, right? Nobody is going to ever check page 2000. So what would be uh, the criteria for Google to choose which results to put on page one versus page two? What should be even result number one versus result number two? That is a decision that Google needs to make. And Google makes that decision based on a number of factors, but but those, the, the decision is really based on what Google thinks, Google's, and this is a completely automated process, but Google's search engine and assessment, which is, which is a pretty technically involved process, makes the determination that this is likely the best order of results that people who are searching for those keywords would like to see them on the Google results. So that's really how Google is trying to uh, create that order. So if you notice, it's, it's like what they said was, this is how Google thinks it's likely to be the best order for the person who's searching for them. So you can, uh, you can already realize uh, Google cannot be 100% confident, but they have a process to make basically a best guess of what is the best order. And that order basically is defined based on some scoring, some point system. So every single relevant result for a keyword gets a score by Google based on a number of factors. It could be over a hundred factors that are um, relevant. And for every one of those factors, Google has a weight and gives a score to that page and then adds them up eventually for every single keyword there is going to be millions of possible results, but Google gives them some uh, different score for every single result and then displays the results depending on whatever result has the best score versus the second score versus the third score. So what are the key uh, aspects? I categorize them to four, and I will be a little more detailed on these on the following slides. I mentioned this last week, but um, I want to go over them with a little more, um, I guess, um, information and uh, hopefully making sure everybody uh, can follow. So um, number one factor is the content. And when they say content, it means any text that is on that page, any video that is on that page, even any images that has a page. Google doesn't usually convert the images into any uh, keywords, but Google looks at the name of the images on the page. Google does convert uh, the voice on any videos to text and does index that text and include it in its analysis, similar to as if you have any actual text on the page. And of course, for the text. So Google is going to look at any content on the page. Then if there is any location information on the page, you know, there could be a website developed by someone in India and the server could be in Philippines, but it says Houston, Texas. For Google, because internet does not have a location. Internet is just a global um, uh, network. So what, by location, location is a specific content. So if the content on the page includes some lo location information, Google is going to take that into uh, it's ranking, I guess, the scoring or relevance. So because I'm searching like plumber near me, all the web, web pages that have something related to Houston, Texas are going to be considered relevant if they have plumber and then, um, and then some, some indication that they are related to Houston, Texas based on the content on the page. Then the second, uh, the, third, the, thir the third factor is really the authority, the credibility of the page. Usually, Google uses backlink as one of the most important um, indications of the credibility of a page. And what is a backlink? A backlink is when, you, uh, when your page, when your website 
is linked in some other website, in some other pages. So let's say you have a website that there are a bunch of web blogs, there are a bunch of news articles, there are a bunch of other um, um, online pages that have linked to your page. That just tells Google that like everybody's talking about them, so this is credible. And of course, there are going to be many different websites that have many different backlinks, but the websites that have more backlinks or backlinks in more credible websites, those are going to be getting a higher ranking in terms of credibility or their backlink score. And then another very important uh, factor is traffic behavior. And what does that mean? Let's say you have a website that uh, is somehow related to plumbers near me, and Google puts, puts that website on first uh, page of results uh, for that keyword. But then every time someone goes to that page, they immediately close the page. So that just tells Google that your website is actually not as relevant than Google. Because remember, the goal that Google has is to make sure the results that it shows is uh, the likely best, best guess of what people like to see when they are going to search on Google. And that means if, if people are just immediately closing the page, that just means, okay, Google was wrong in its original guess. And it has a completely dynamic, um, uh, I guess, algorithm. It has a pretty dynamic algorithm to, to revisit that ranking and immediately going to understand, okay, after 5, 10, 50, 100 people, because if, if, if thousands of people are searching on Google, Google is going to quickly know that actually it was not the right decision. People are not happy with this website. And it will immediately revisit the scoring of that link as you know, going to give them a lower ranking. So this is a pretty dynamic system. But the thing is, if you get to the first page of Google, you have been likely already great in your user experience. Your users were not just right away closing the page. They would spend some time. Usually, like if, you, if they spend over 60 seconds, that's a good indication that, OK, people are happy that Google uh, showed the, that page or that result to them when they were searching for the keyword. So Google will appreciate that. That's why a lot of websites put some YouTube videos, some other videos on their page, or created somehow even entertaining for, for people who visit their website, so people who visit the website would not just immediately uh, or quickly close the window. They would spend some time on that page. And that's, that's an indication for Google. And that's why people are doing it. So, so if you think about these uh, like high-level categories, it just tells you the uh, the way you can kind of like reverse engineering, reverse engineer this process. Because if these are the factors that are important for Google, then obviously, uh, if you are able to do a great job on creating um, content, relevant content to what you need, making sure your location information is properly set, making sure you have a growing number of backlinks. And backlinks could be from your social media posts. It could be from uh, other places. You, can, you have some ways to create backlinks. If you do have a community of customers, if people are sharing your stuff and you have backlinks, those are basically stuff that all kind of all add up. Um, and um, if you do have so the backlinks, and you have a great web page where people are showing um, a kind of a positive reaction or response to Google trying to send them to those pages. That just all means that you're going to get a good uh, chance to be listed on the top rank. And there are some, uh, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little more uh, detail on that. But, but, but this should already tell you that it's kind of a fair game in a, in a way for those who uh, uh, try to make it happen. Because what Google is really trying to do is showing users what is the best guess. And uh, for those who don't do this, there's no way for Google to know their uh, web pages or rank them high because they're just uh, trying to follow some process that is uh, scalable and can handle billions of daily searches. But if you do follow these recommendations, you're going to be able to develop a relationship with Google's uh, system and get the traffic. So this is the result. I actually did show this last week. I will be a little more um, 
uh, quick on passing through this slide, but I just want to touch on it again. Uh, so this is again plumber near me. This was the result number three uh, that I showed you guys last week, and this is johnmoreservices.com. We searched plumber near me. This was so there was those sponsor uh, links on the top. Then there was the ads, and there was then there was the map, and then there was this organic. And this is the third organic result, and you can um, see that even that organic result has. 7,900 free traffic every month. And that's a lot, 7,900 free visitors from Google every month. And I did show you that that's actually worth over $100,000 of paid ads. And this, this website is actually getting all of that for free. So whatever they did to get to this point, you can already tell this was an investment. So they were able to successfully get to a point where they are getting so much, so many traffic from Google every month for free. That's a steady. So this is the great thing. And this is the part that they really want to um, think about uh, that, that's, that's pretty different from the way people used to do business. People used to do business completely based on um, experiment, which means they would start doing something and they would see what happens. And after some time, they had some experience. But with Google, the great thing is that there is data available that to a large extent allows you to have some projection. You have some predictability. You have some data to make some determination, at least to some good extent, about what you should expect if you're going after, um, after some uh, uh, online marketing based on Google. I want to show you um, uh, quickly a couple of tools that I use to um, to analyze a website. See, let's let's say you are a competition because how can you find your competition? Oh, it's, it's pretty easy, right? Let's say somebody has a personal training business in Chicago, so you can just search personal training. Uh, and and you can put near Chicago, uh, or if you're already in Chicago, you can just cost. I'm sorry, you can just search uh, near me. So um, if you do the search, you're gonna see the same, uh, pretty similar, I guess, um, um, format. There is a come some ads on the top, then there is a map with some local businesses. So these are paid. Uh, displays. So these are not paying Google right away. So none of these guys because of Google showing them to me, I've paid Google anything, but the moment I click on them, Google will charge them a cost per click, which we will show some numbers uh, pretty soon. But but these are the local uh, results that Google is displaying them for free, and then these are the organic results. So you can already tell that these are the top successful competitions. If you are a personal trainer in Chicago, and you're looking to find who is my successful competition, this is your easiest way to do that research, you just start, go to Google and see who, who else, um, who, who is, whose website uh, Google uh, shows you if you do search for that keyword. Now, on any of these websites, if you take the link, there are um, different tools that are available for you to um, go ahead and analyze those tools. Here, I am. Uh, I want to stick to this, this, uh, this website, which is John, uh, johnmoreservices.com, which is a Houston-based local business. And I want to use this website to analyze and show you some of the information that we can learn um, by uh, using some of the available online tools. There are a number of tools. Some of them are more simple. Some of them are a little more, um, I guess, sophisticated. This one is a fairly... Um, fairly developed tool. Uh, it's, a, it's a paid tool. It's not a free tool, even though you can get a free trial on it. Uh, like I think they give you like a seven day free trial. It's called SEMrush. So see this website, uh, see I'm getting all this information. This website has 11, over 11,000 um, organic uh, search, meaning uh, it has, uh, 
oh wow, this, th this, is, this is showing 46% increase. And so when I created that the screenshot, it was 7,900, now it's showing 11.2. So they, have, they had almost 50% increase on the number of free traffic they're getting from Google. So they're doing a great job. See, this is, this is another interesting thing to, to note. So what these guys are doing, you can actually see a pretty detailed um, list of information about how these guys are doing. You can see what keywords they have included on their website. You can actually see on what keywords they are the first result of Google. But, but you can also see what's the search volume on every one of those keywords. And you can see what portion of that 11.2 thousand results come from any one of these keywords. So you can see that 34% of that 11.2 thousand are coming from people actually searching the exact brand, John Moore. Um, so it just tells that this is pretty brand. So they have established their brand. People know their brand. People are actually directly looking for them. But then there are a bunch of other keywords like pest control Houston or how to fix um, garbage disposal. So these are pretty generic keywords, non-branded keywords that this website is being uh, uh, ranked. Uh, so this one is like 11th position. This one's fourth position. So they're getting traffic from other keywords. But, but those are like the results. But what is important for us to understand here is how they are getting that ranking. And if you go into the details, you will be able to see, for instance, this says this website has 35,000 backlinks. So that means they were able to create a lot of um, referrals in a way, call it referrals. And this, this here, I can see the, the actual web pages that have backlinks to this website. I can see what page, um, and then I can actually see the link. I can actually go and see the page where this, this link is mentioned. I can see the, uh, the date where it was first seen. I can see a lot of other information about this website. So what does that tell you? That just tells you that if you are, for instance, a personal trainer in Chicago, and you're trying to beat your competition, you can use this similar like this kind of a reverse engineering process, you can get the link, you can go to the tool like SEMrush, you can look at where they have been listed and you can try to develop a similar, similar presence and similar, um, um, I guess, uh, um, score because, because Google is just a software. The Google search engine is just a software. It doesn't have any personal opinion. It doesn't have any bias in anything. It is just a software that goes by data. And there is no way it could do anything else because of the scale that is following. The only way that the Google search engine could work is by following a pretty systematic uh, structured process to develop its scoring system. So the only way that, um, that uh, another website can get a similar ranking is that it follows a similar, similar list of credentials. So I could show you on here, if it's about the content, if it's about the location, if it's about the backlink, if it's about traffic behavior, then you wanna make sure you're doing great and you can use the competition information as a benchmark to have an understanding of how good you need to be and how, how much work you need to do. And another piece of information that is helpful here is that Depending on what keyword, for instance, this 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 uh, website, they are they are they offer a bunch of services. Maybe you don't have to worry about all of those services. For instance, maybe if you are a personal trainer, you, you're just very specific. Maybe your service is something else. You can actually look at what is the search volume on the very specific keywords that are relevant to you. And um, and another great thing is. Uh, with these tools, and there are free tools that are available. This is this is an example. These are the keywords that are actually um, these are actually keywords that are related to the website that uh, John Moore um, Services .com website. So you can see that on some of these keywords, the volume is pretty high, on, and and you can see that on some of some others, the volume is less. You can also see what is the trend. And that's an important piece of information as well, because some of these have a pretty steady trend. Some of them are under rise. 
and some of them might be on the decline. So you don't want to invest on keywords that are on the decline. Like how many people today are looking for um, a device that is pretty old dated? I mean, less and less people, right? So if, if, if you do some research, you can actually, because you never know exactly what's going on with your keyword, but you can literally see the trend and the data specific to every single keyword when you use these, data, these tools that actually pull data from Google and tell you. This term up here, and I want to talk about it, it's called keyword difficulty or KD. It's, it's important for you to understand. If you're trying to compete on getting free traffic from Google, keyword difficulty is a very important um, uh, piece of information. It tells you how hard or easy it is for you to be able to be ranked on the first page of Google or on top top ranking and get a good score. You can see the numbers are anywhere between zero and 100. Most of these numbers are kind of in the 50s. Usually, the lower this number, the easier. For instance, you can see plumbers near me is 58, but 24 hour plumbers near me is 40. So it's easier to get ranked on this keyword versus this keyword. That means if you put some more content about this keyword on your page or put a video that talks about the 24 hour plumbers near, uh, you know, services that you offer, that will automatically make it much easier for you to get a better ranking when people are searching for this keyword. And you know what? There are actually other keywords that are even even easier. Like this one says plumbers near me, free estimate. This one is 43. This one is 42, certified plumbers near me. So maybe you don't have to have work uh, towards getting the 135,000 search volume, which has, um, uh, which has a higher keyword difficulty. Maybe you can spend time to get results from people who are looking for certified plumbers near me. If you are a certified plumber, you can actually invest on that. And how would you get to this list of keywords? There is a simple way. You can actually research your competition. And uh, one of the simple ways, and free ways actually, you don't even have to have access to this tool. One of the simple ways that you can do that is through Google Ads. You know, creating a Google Ads account is free. It's called ads.google.com. You see ads.google.com, and you can go to the Google Ads website. When you go to the Google Ads website, it's going to allow you to create an account. I'm already logged in here, so I'm just going to go and um, show you directly uh, on the way. So you may have to create an account. It's free. But when you do, then on the top, it has a link to what it says, tools. So when you go to tools, you will be able to go to the keyword planner. And when you go to Keyword Planner, it provides you with two different tools. One is get search volume and forecast, and the other is find new keywords. So let's say you are trying to get some search volume and forecast um, on any keyword. I'm trying to say uh, plumber near uh, Chicago. So when I search for plumber near Chicago, this is going to give me a pretty uh, helpful okay. all right I'm gonna have a 30 second pause I will be uh, continuing this wire for the uh, inconvenience okay. and you guys feel free to ask any questions you might have in the comment section I have I hope I'm not uh, being uh, too boring for some of you but I really just want to show you how everything is so predictable and so um, 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 projectable. It's not something that you're just shooting in the dark. It's not something that you have no clue. Your competition is doing all of this stuff, and you could be doing the same thing. Yeah, so I was showing you um, the results on plumber near me so um, you see I so I went to the tools then I went to the keyword planner and it actually showed me uh, some data so basically it looks like there isn't much traffic so if you're if you're trying to target plumber near Chicago you're not going to get a lot of traffic so this is this was just a random keyword that I searched but there is another thing that this uh, keyword uh, planner offers and here is 
see this was the other one. So on keyword planner, I went with the option that says find new keywords. So let's say you're trying to analyze your competition. I am just searching, I'm just copying this from this website and I'm putting that uh, on here. It says find new keywords. I'm just putting the URL of your competition on this page and get it started. See what happens. It actually is telling me all the keywords that this website has. So you can actually go into every single of these um, keywords and um, uh, see what they are. You can actually look at the trend. You can look at the monthly search volume. So I'm sorting them. You can see that, okay, water heater, water heater is one of the top keywords that this website um, is, uh, is attracting from Google tankless water heater. So you see that these are like some keywords. So this is how you can also look at your competition. That's one way to do it. Um, another way that like it's probably a little more um, help effective, but this is the display tool. Let's say I'm looking for a personal trainer near me. So I'm looking for looking for a uh, <coughs> personal trainer uh, near Houston, Texas. So when I search for that keyword, um, okay. Okay, see personal trainer, and I'm gonna put near Houston, Texas. Um, so I'm searching for that keyword because that's maybe like the service that you offer. When you search for that, what happens? You can actually get um, not just data um, from what is the search volume on that specific keyword, but you can also get data for relevant keywords so like what are the other keywords that people are who are usually interested in that specific keyword are searching for so it's not giving me much results right now and um, it might be because people are usually not searching for that term in houston texas but here is okay so i search for personal trainer and you can see that these are a bunch of other keywords that people are searching and it does give you not just the volume information but it also tells you the trend and it also gives you the keyword difficulty. So maybe on some of these keywords, uh, it's just too high and it's not always easy to compete, but there's some other uh, keywords that they still have a decent volume, still have a good steady trend and they do have a lower um, keyword difficulty. Like here is private personal training. This is 47. You can compare that with that 67 personal training certification or personal training near me. So, so rather than optimizing for some of these keywords, you can be optimizing your website or web page with another keyword that has a lower competition or, com or it's easier to catch up. So, so um, my, my goal here is not to um, really uh, go into a lot of details in here. My goal is really to show you that there are so many details that you can consider, but but you got to be able to do some research and you got to be able to find the keyword that is perfect target for you. So you got to be able to say, okay, here's what I'm offering. Here's what the people, because see the great thing with these um, um, leads that are coming from Google is that they are actively searching for it. So this is by far different. If you're just cold calling random customers, trying to get them interested in your product, what is the chance you can convert them into a paying customer? It's, it's of course much less than when someone is actively searching on Google, trying to get that from you, uh, or trying to find you if you're offering that service. That's, that's a much uh, warmer lead and it's a much more um, 
likely case if for you to be able to convert them into a paying customer. It's not just that they're interested, but they're actually interested in that very moment that they're searching for it on Google. And then Google is going to be able to send them directly to your website. And of course, you've got to be able to follow up with them. So like the competition analysis, it's, it's very important, but it's also very helpful. And in a way, it's simple. It's not too complicated. Yes, there are a lot of numbers you're seeing here. But the idea is that, okay, if this guy was so successful to get 11.2 thousand um, traffic from Google every month, and they're actually getting 49% more this month uh, from last month, then why can't I get the same thing? Why, why should I? Because you know what? This is actually getting some of your clients. This is probably getting some of the clients from other people who do not have a website or not doing as much to get those leads. So it's just simple. If you do this, you can get more business. If you don't, you're probably going to lose business because somebody else is doing it. And then people are using more and more the Google search to find what they have. So, so uh, going back to my uh, four, four um, items, there is the content, there is the location, there is the backlink, there is traffic. So what does that do for you? Those will make it possible for you to get a great ranking on Google. Are there other, other ways possible to get ranking, uh, to get leads from Google? Yes, there is paid ads. So the paid ads is something I do like to talk about uh, in our next seminar. But, but um, the great thing with this SEO is that it's really like an investment. And um, I want to add a couple of key um, points here. First of all, I didn't mention about Google Trends. So I did show you some trends data on, um, on SEMrush, but there is a website. It's a free website. It's called Google Trends, trends.google.com. If you go to trends.google.com, you can search for any keyword. And you can even specifically uh, search for that keyword in your location. So I'm going to just go ahead search for plumber near me. So see, I'm searching for plumber near me, and I'm going to make it specific to Houston, Texas. And I'm going to look for the trend for the last uh, five years. So, um, so Houston, Texas, plumber in the last five years. You can look at this result and you can clearly see that uh, five years ago, the trend was definitely much less than what it is uh, today. You can see there's a clear rise. So that just tells you, okay, people are using Google more and more to find plumbers. That just tells you if you do have a relationship with Google, you're likely to get some new customers, new clients. And if you don't, you're lose, likely to lose lose them because people are using Google to find clients. And so this is trends.google.com. Um, like I show you, you could have also that information from SEMrush, which is a more <clears throat> developed tool. And it is a paid tool. Um, um, and um, another, another thing I wanted to mention is that, OK, see so this John Moore services, last month it was 7,900, now it's 11 thousand you may not need eleven thousand leads per month you may only need 10 leads per month you may only need 20. so so don't think that it's like this is an impossible game no you might be actually able to get some keywords that are still going to give you those uh, handful of customers that you want to add to your network every month and you can actually start growing your business while you start doing this without having to have 35,000 backlinks. You can have much less number of backlinks and still get uh, some uh, some valuable um, um, benefit from developing that relationship. But again, uh, this this is not you know this traffic gain going to your website is the first step. You got to be able to convert those customers to uh, paying uh, or traffic or leads into paying customers. And in order for that to happen. You've got to have a system in place to quickly follow up because the way it works is that people are getting more and more impatient. So if they contact you through your web page and you don't get back to them pretty quick, you may actually lose them. They may just actually go back to Google, search for that same keyword. This time, not go to your website, but go to the next result and, um, and have somebody else help them. 
with what they need in that moment. So you've got to have a website, but that's not everything. You've got to have a website. You've got to make sure you have a relationship with Google, and you've got to have you make sure you have a system in place to follow up and close it, close that sale, close that relationship, establish that um, customer client, um, I guess, provider relationship, and uh, so that you can be successful. But um, um, like I said, <clears throat> data is available, and there is there is uh, that's the great thing about being able to project and use data to really not be shooting in the dark, but have a plan. If you're planning to have 50 new customers every month, and you're able to have a six to 12 months plan, because another question is, okay, how long does it take? It all depends on how quickly you can develop, but it's usually a few months up to like over 12 months, maybe 14, 15 months before when you, uh, I mean, from the time that you kind of start a brand new web, pa web page or a very, um, very inactive web page to where you will be able to get uh, a decent number of leads from Google. The duration of that is usually 14, 15 months, but it does depend on details. Like I showed you, there is search volume, there's trend, there is keyword difficulty. You have to take those into consideration. You have to have the proper content set, then Google does <coughs> index all those and do revise their scoring system. And you have to have a good page that does convert traffic into contacts and leads because sometimes you get the traffic, but people are not uh, able to quickly trust your web page and they just close it and it will immediately um, um, have an impact on your uh, score with Google. Um, so um, I, I explained all of that. I want to I want to quickly also talk about how QuickGig helps. So you know, we are a startup here based in Houston, Texas, and we are building a tool that helps small business owners and service providers to get all of that very much simplified available to them. Like if you remember, I mentioned there are three different um, uh, steps to be able to get those leads from Google. One is to have a web page that is properly optimized to get those leads. The second is have um, uh, have the um, uh, so there is the web page. There is the optimization so that the content and the setting are properly set for Google. And the third one is having a simple way to quickly follow up. So we kind of have built that all in one toolbox. And um, so the QuickGig solution uh, is. Uh, an all-in-one toolbox that got, gives you CRM, customer relationship management tool, that would allow you to quickly follow up with anyone that contacts you through your web page. So everyone who goes to your web page and send, wants to contact you, it will go to the app so you can get a notification in the app <clears throat> and follow up with them, send them an email or respond, respond them. Uh, it's, it has a chat tool and you can actually quickly um, um, know that someone contacted you. And that's a great thing because because um, otherwise, a lot of websites just give you um, um, a great website, but the email goes to email goes to your mailbox, which is just you know lost um, in many other emails that you keep receiving from all different places. So it's usually not easy to quickly follow up. But with the CRM that you're offering, and you can see some of the screenshot, which has a pretty simple design, you can quickly get notification in your phone. Uh, it's going to have a very specific place only for your leads. And then it also helps you run your business. You can add your team members. You can add your existing clients. You can send them invoice. You can send payments. It's going to be direct deposit payments. You can collect credit card payments from your clients. So it's a very simple tool. And the great thing is that it actually the CRM is free. So when you sign up with QuickGig, you get this entire thing for free. But if you do want to get the website and want us to help you with optimizing it and linking it to Google, then you're going to have to pay some subscription fee, which is still pretty affordable. And you can visit our website, quickgig.com, and see details. And what we usually do, we usually have a one, uh, half, a, half an hour onboarding call we will, where we will discuss your specific needs and help you with, uh, with your uh, specific goals and objectives. So you can get the CRM, you can get the website, you can get the online marketing the strategy and online marketing uh, packages that uh, we're going to help you. Also, the, the thing about us is we make sure it's pretty simple design. It's, uh, it doesn't 
confuse you and we do have the phone call where we will help you to get on board so you don't have to worry about it being possibly a little too technical and then you will also get a listing on our marketplace so we have a marketplace which also has, has a search engine similar to google except that uh, everybody who searches on the home page on quickly.com um, they will be finding only businesses who are listed on the marketplace so if you are uh, going to join now, which is a good timing because uh, we only have 40,000 users, which is only a few thousand service providers, you will be an early adopter of this marketplace. But uh, you get all of that. So the list listing and the CRM is basically free. If you want to get a website or marketing and strategy support, those are paid services as you will see uh, information on the website. So I hope uh, today's seminar was helpful. Um, we are more than happy to um, help you guys if there is uh, uh, something that you think we can um, we can help you get any questions. Marshall, do we have any questions from the audience? We don't. No, I mean, I've, an I've, I've answered them. Okay, awesome, awesome. Did you, did you share the link for? Yeah. Okay, so Marshall is sharing a link. It's a, it's a basically simple form where you can put your email address if you like to get directly notified about any future seminars. But um, but um, I'm 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 happy that um, we were able to um, uh, go through these basic concepts. Next time, I want to go ahead and talk about Google Ads because yes, it is paid. But see, at the end of the day, everybody wants to grow their business, and if it does make sense, if you're making money, if you can make more money, and if you can make a lot of money, you might be willing to spend some money on. Uh, getting uh, some ads, uh, so you shouldn't be scared of the cost, but uh, what is important is you make sure you are on the right track and you're not, uh, you know, losing your opportunities with Google because this is definitely um, a pretty sharp trend that you cannot ignore as a business owner if you want to be successful. Um, Already, thank you guys. Uh, I, I'm sharp on one hour, and um, I think it's uh, time up. Uh, time is up, and it's good, uh, good to end the uh, seminar. Uh, we will have another seminar. We will keep you posted. If you do like our page on Facebook, you will be able to get uh, any updates on the page. And like I mentioned, if you do fill this uh, sign up form, you will also get notified um, with any future seminars. Thank you very much and have a great day. Um...